Hey boys and girls, welcome back to Pokemon Violets. In the last episode, we learned the ins and outs of the ever-mysterious linguist that is Yuba Academy's language arts professor, Mr. Salvatore, learning not only do people have their own languages to understand, but the Pokemon themselves as well, which is a very interesting concept for sure, depending on how your understanding of the topic is interpreted. Overall, a very unique world of study, because of the small dive we did into learning other languages, something I truly didn't expect to see in this game, which was pretty cool to see, and witness honestly, just because, uh, well, I was thinking maybe we learned maybe a little bit of, like, Spanish because of it being Sp based on Spain, or maybe a little bit of Japanese because, you know, the games are made in Japan, but honestly, it was very interesting just because of the fact that we learned multiple different languages, and not just, you know, one, which was pretty cool. And then we got into a whole, like, trying to understand Pikachu and thing, and that got a little iffy. But, honestly, if you know a little bit of knowledge on the anime, like, if you've recently seen the anime and knew the exact vocal patterns of Pikachu in the anime, maybe you can kind of figure it out a little bit easier than we did. But... It was very interesting, nonetheless. But for today's adventure, I think we're going to be getting into a t into a teacher that we met in the story that we didn't get enough of a look at, I believe. And that is going to be Dendro. I think that's who we should look into today. And thing is, we may not have to do shock, but we still have time. We still have Ray Forts. Obviously, this is Dendra, and then we have Hazel, and then we have Nimona and Arvin. So, honestly, we still have quite a couple ones left before our series is over, and we still need to do the Legendaries, which I believe the Legendaries are tied to one of these teachers. So, obviously, Biology is for Pokedex, but I believe there is a teacher that is connected to the Legendaries. It's, um, I'm not sure which one, I forgot which one was. I think I mentioned it before, just because obviously I had to do a little bit of research into it. And then obviously we had Sagwaro for the Sweet Herb and Mystica, which requires you to do six star terror rates to get. So there's a couple that are required that do have requirements, but I believe we're done with most of them. Obviously, whatever the teacher is, I believe it's Rayfort, I could be wrong. But I think it's Rayfort is the one that's tied to the legendaries. And then Jacques is obviously biology. So, other than that, we still have math, ba battle studies, and arts. And then, obviously, we'll probably do history last, if that is indeed the case, for the legendary thing. Just because I would meld a little bit well into finishing up Jacques as well. But, that being said, let's get into battle studies, because I really want to see how Dendra is doing. Because Dendra, we had a small interaction with inside the main story. We did meet her a little bit in the beginning. Not a lot. It was just as much as Ray Fort we did at the beginning. But she was a part of Tulip's gym as the ESP practice. So we did get a small little look into Dendrum before the Ace Academy tournaments. So honestly, it's about time we get a little bit more understanding of Dendrum. So would I like to take the battle studies um, with Miss Dendra? Yes, I would. So let's get into the, obviously her classroom is up at the top of the school over in the schoolyard. So we already know where we're going to be going. Unless she has her own classroom, but I think she's up there because that's where she is. When we look inside the school, we can actually find her up on the schoolyard where Nimona is. The classes will begin soon. Don't be tardy. Don't be tardy whatsoever indeed. Let's see if she does have her classroom though. I was thinking she would be up on top of the school though, but I guess... We'll find out here in a second. Yep, she is to indeed on top of the school. <laughs> well, that answers that one. Um, Osu, say hello to your battle instructor. The one, the only, the hot-blooded Dendra. Um, Osu is a karate thing. I was wondering what that what, what that meant, because she kept saying it. Um, by the way, look it up. My age, 25. My hobby, working out. My type, well... Okay, then. Interesting. Um, strong and muscular fighting types, of course. Okay, interesting. 
Oh, we actually have our Pokemon actually with us. That's interesting. So Vendetta or Annihilate is actually next to us. That's interesting because you can see Arvin's Mabo stuff on the right. Does Nimona have Palmot or is that Ryoldu hers? I'm pretty sure it's Palmot is who she's holding out, but that's interesting though. Huh. Okay then. Interesting. So, wonder how this class is gonna go. Were we gonna actually battle? That'd be interesting. Um, that's all for my introduction. As for my class, this is where you all get to learn the nitty gritty of Pokemon battling. We'll start with the basics so that no trainer gets left in the dust. Even if you're new to this stuff, have no fear. Leave it to me and my muscles, and you'll be pros in no time. Um, let's set our fighting spirits of Blaze together. Okay. Um, Pokemon have all kinds of moves at their disposal. Each move has certain qualities that you'll want to remember. I'm talking about the power type and category of these moves. Okay. Higher power means more damage, especially if your opponent is weak to that move's type. Which makes a lot of sense. Um, heads up, new kid. Question coming your way. There are two categories that attack moves can fall under. Um, know what they are. Okay, well, physical and special, but that's not the only types. Their status, as well as the question, question, question mark, which is unknown. But, it does have its own type, though. But, yeah, it's iffy. It's definitely iffy. It really depends on, um, what we're working with. In this case, it would be physical and, and special, though. For sure. But, um, we'll read through the options. Moves of light and moves of darkness. Technically, yes, there is types like that, but not in this case. No, that's not what she means. And moves you love and moves you hate. No. Physical moves and special moves, obviously. That's an easy one. Okay. So far, so good. Simple, but effective. It's definitely good for somebody that doesn't know their, their typing, so they learn this stuff. So it's good that they have this. Um, awesome. You're just as sharp as I expected, new kid. Looks like you have to handle on the basics. Um, anyways, attack moves are split into two categories. Physical and special. Um, hmm. Wait. Physical moves do damage the higher the Pokemon's attack stat is. I got a little confused there. Sometimes it goes up by one, and then sometimes it goes to a different dialogue entirely. So I got a little confused because I pressed it early on myself. Also, her eyes look like TMs, by the way. I just realized that. Huh. That's pretty interesting. They look like the little CDs. Huh. I wonder which one that would be. Based on the type of the coloring, it kind of reminds me of, like, Overheat or something like that. But the thing is, this fighting's a darker red. Based on what I remember, because orange is fire, if I remember. So that would be more, like, obviously, like a drain punch or something like that. It's for fighting type, but that's interesting, though. Um, and special moves do more damage the higher the Pokemon's special attack stat is. On the other side of things, Pokemon getting hit by these moves can take less damage by having high defense or special defense stats, respectively. Which makes a lot of sense. Um, in conclusion, Pokemon that are good with physical moves should raise their attack stats. Pokemon with the with good with special moves should raise their special attack stats. Try to, try to raise both of these stats equally. We'll just make it hard for the Pokemon to shine in battle. Um, make your strong points stronger. I always say, it goes for both Pokemon and people. Um, oh man, I was just about to suggest we do some hands-on practice to really drive the point home. But I guess we're out of time. I guess so. Interesting, though. Very interesting for somebody that doesn't know that, for sure. Um, we'll generally meet for my class here in the schoolyard, even for book learning. Nothing like a little fresh air out to make studying more fun, am I right? True. Um, the class is over for now. Take care, you little rascals. I wonder if her midterms are going to be outside. That'd be interesting. Just because, um, you know, you'd have to sit on the grass. Unless, you know, there is a couple tables out there, I think, if I remember correctly. Just because we've only been really been up in the schoolyard a couple times. But interesting, though. Okay, well, Battle Studies number two with Dendra, obviously. So let's set that up. So, let's see here. What could number two be? I'm wondering if it's going to be super effective hits now. 
that would make sense to me with the fact that they talked about power and status. Well, not status, but special pow um, tax and physical tax. Could be status too, honestly. Let's see here. Um, another day, another round of battle study, Osu. Let's get right to it. Um, is everyone excited about the treasure hunt? It's always a great adventure. You get to take on gems, go to new places, and run all over the place with your po partner Pokemon. And while you're running around out there, I'll bet you, you'll come across some big shining crystals fairly often as well. Oh, terror raids. That's interesting. I was not expecting this one to come up. Um, these crystals are actually collections of terrestrial energy. That's seeped up out of the ground. Obviously from Area Zero, based on what we learned. Um, you can check out these crystals to battle Terra Pokemon with your friends or other trainers in a group of four. And I've only been able to do solo raids, but I have been able to do two-person raids with um, Kraken, obviously. With a little bit of, like, you know, I have to let him use my game. But still, I have been able to do a little bit of it, which is nice. So I understand what two-person raiding would be. But I've never done a four-person raid just because I don't have uh, Nintendo Online. I really should, but I just don't have it, just to be completely honest. But let's see here. Um, we call those battles Terra Raid Battles. The Terra Pokemon you'll face off in a Terra Raid battle is, are crazy, though. They sometimes act differently than regular Pokemon, so you'll need to be on your guard. They also attack three to five times randomly. I don't know why. They're not supposed to do that, I'm pretty sure, though. Um, luckily, trainers can also use a special action in Terra Raid Battles. It's called Cheering. And that doesn't seem to always work, either, to be completely honest. Um, there are three different cheers you can use. One gives you physical and special attack up. One gives you defense, special defense up. And then one heals you. And it's supposed to stay even if the Pokemon drops your stats. But it disappears. It's odd. I don't know what happens with that. Just because the stats don't s seem to stick for some reason, even though they're supposed to, from what I understand. So, cheering doesn't seem like it's really worth it. It's better to go for your own stats, and then try and go for, like, screeches and stuff like that if you're using, like, an Annihilate if you're solo, like I am. But, if everybody was you if you had four-person raids and then everyone was using cheering, I think it would probably make more of a difference, because then you can get three, like, three attack up instantly, and then three defense up. Or actually, no, it would be four, because you're doing it with four people. But, um, I feel like you would have more of a bonus from that. But the thing is, is the, the in solo raids, you don't get any bonuses from your allies. Because allies literally don't do anything. They don't terrestrialize their Pokemon. They don't cheer. They don't help you at all. They literally are there just to mess you up. I really do think that. That happened back in Sword and Shield 2, to be completely honest. I don't... I... I... I feel like solo ratings a little kind of miserable, and it could be miserable in the in multiplayer too. I honestly don't know, just because I haven't done it. Just because that's how you get hidden ability Pokemon, and how you get the hidden ability patches too. So yeah, and it's a little iffy. I will say that, but the the raid dens in Sword and Shield was a big reason why I didn't play Sword and Shield after I beat it, to be completely honest. All I did was Isle of Armor and then Crown Tundra, and I had more fun in the overworld than doing any kind of raiding in that one. This one I can actually tolerate the raids, because the raids are a little bit more fun in this game, but Sword and Shields, I did not like them. I couldn't really play them, just because it was too restrictive because you would get like a Magikarp or something weird where they don't do anything at all. At least the ones in this one they actually attack. So at least you're seeing damage being dealt by all allies even if you're solo. But yeah, they definitely don't help very very much, I will be honest. They do like maybe two damage and then make you do all the damage in solo raids. It's kind of weird. But if you're playing with multiple other people, I can definitely see Probably being better, to be honest. But let's continue, though. Um, the first cheer is go all out. 
It boosts the attack and special attack of all allied Pokemon. The second is Hang Tough. This one boosts the defense and special defense of all allied Pokemon. Oh. So cheering does nothing for you. Specifically. So you get plus three attack and special defense. Or attack, special attack, special defense, defense. For other people cheering for you. So you can make your allies Pokemon better in solo raids. But you get no bonus benefits from cheering yourself in solo raids, which is very unfortunate. Okay, interesting. Now at least I know that. I didn't know that before. Okay. That's- so, you get three and three for everybody. That's interesting. But you can only do it three times. So, it depends on the situation. But, you could technically get six and six for both attack and defense in a multi-raid. So, it's not that bad, for sure. And then you can have one for heal, so it's not that bad, for sure. But interesting, though. Um, and the third. Well, let's see if you can guess. Okay. This chair restores HP for all your ally Pokemon. What do you think it is? Heal up? Bam Bam Potion? That's a funny one. Explosive Healing Wave. Obviously heal up, since all of them are just cheer up, stuff like that. So obviously it's gotta be heal up. Oh, um, that's right. Maybe I should make you the battle teacher, huh, new kid? Honestly, you probably could, based on us being the literal powerhouse of the school, based on the Academy Ace Tournament. Um, the third and final chair is heal up. It's a real powerhouse. The ability to both restore HP and cure status conditions, which can come in handy. Um, you can cheer up to three times during single Terra Raid battle. Also, cheering uses up a turn in battle, so you won't be able to have your Pokemon use any sort of any of their moves when you cheer. Okay. Um, in conclusion, try everything at your disposal. If nothing seems to be working, try cheering on your allies. Providing support for your team can sometimes open up a new realm of possibilities. Okay. So that's why I never understood the cheering thing. I thought I was boosting everybody by doing that. I was only boosting my AFK allies, basically, because, you know, they're not real people at all for solo raids. So, huh. Well, it, I did notice that they were doing more damage, so I did notice that, but I thought I was raising my stats as well. So, okay, I understand it. I, I knew I was giving them damage, but I didn't know I wasn't giving myself at all. So that's interesting. Hmm, okay then. So I need to note that for later. Solo rating, you should really focus on yourself, though. For if you're using Pokemon like I am, Annihilate, you want to get three bulk ups. Try and do three screeches if you can. Hopefully the Pokemon attacks you all, all six times. Because then you'll be able to do a Rage Fist and do max damage. Because 50, 50 power per being hit. So you need to get hit through six times. To get the max. And then you can go for the big hit with the Rage Fist and just one-shot the Pokemon through the shield without the shield ever popping up. Because once the shield pops up, that's when it's kind of over and then you're kind of up to luck when it comes to the rest of that for solo rating. I don't really understand the regular rating, but that's how I understand it. But there is Pokemon you can use in solo rating that aren't Annihilate, like a Belly Drum, a Zoomerill, and stuff like that. I think, um, Gimme Ghoul's Evolution also has something tied to that as well. I don't know the name of it, but the evolution for Gimme Ghoul is definitely one of them, if I remember correctly, from my, like, researching into doing solo raids, because that's all I can really do. But, very interesting, though. Um, oh man, I was just about to suggest we do some hands-on practice to really drive the point home. But I guess we're out of time. Um, class is over for now. Take care, you little rascals. Take care, you little rascals, indeed. Okay, so two of three. And then we'll get into midterm next. So far, so good for Dendra. Makes a lot of sense for her classroom and her studies. So basically, battle stuff. Terror raids do fit. I was thinking terror raids maybe later, but 
They threw us into a terror raid one in the second one, which was interesting. Very surprised about that one, to be honest. But there we go. Now into the third. Um, another dig another round. A battle study, Osu. Let's get right to it. Last time we learned about terror raid battles. Did any of you have a chance to try them out? Well, I've already done six star raids. I haven't done a seven star raid yet. But, um, yeah, that's not going to be a video. But, um, I'm preparing for a score, um, a C or I keep wanting to say score bunny, but Cinderace raid. Um, but the thing is that I missed out on it. But the thing is, is the time that I'm talking about it tomorrow for me will be the start of being able to do it again. So hopefully I can get one. That'd be kind of cool. Being able to get like a Libero, uh, uh, Cinderace. But the thing is, is I have to do it on Scarlet because on Violet, I want to keep my Delibird raids just because being able to have those Terra shards are nice and then having the second game to kind of do the newer stuff would be nice. But Score Bunny's definite, or Cinderace is definitely going to be a lot harder because six star raids are hard. I don't know what seven star raids are going to be. But, sounds scary though, I will be honest. But, let's continue. Oh, Terra Pokemon are super strong, and the more difficult ones will use an even tougher tactic that you'll need to deal with. Yeah, usually status. I'm talking about their Terra Shield. Yeah, the thing's broken. That's why you, that's why you one-shot them. You do not want that Terra Shield to pop up. Um, what happens while a Pokemon has its Terra Shield up, you ask? Well, it's like way less- it will take way less damage for one. Yeah, for sure. It has a big effect on morale, too. When trainers see the shield go up, they feel doomed. Like there's no way to win the battle. So here's a question for you. If the Pokemon you're battling puts up its Terra Shield, what should you do? Obviously, Terrasalize your Pokemon, call your parents, close your eyes and give in, Terrasalize your Pokemon and attack it. That's why solo raids are hard, because the solo opponent, like, allies don't terrestrialize their Pokemon, so you're the only one doing terrestrialize damage. If everyone was there, I'm pretty sure everyone can terrestrialize if they're human. So, it would be nice. I, I think they should force the AI to terrestrialize, though, if they have the ability to do so. Like, you know, the Pokemon obviously, you know, has an atrasalization. It should force a atrasalization for the Pokemon, no matter what. I think that would be fair for solo players. You shouldn't be forced to feel like you're hopeless when it comes to solo raiding. It really shouldn't be that way. You should feel like you have more of an advantage when you're playing with more people, though. But you shouldn't feel like you're completely disadvantaged. Because some people don't have internet. I'm gonna be honest, what if you live over in, like, uh, Uganda or something, and you don't have internet, you're just play. you get the game. And this is a very interesting dialogue, but you get the game, you don't have any internet, you get the- you have your Switch, you have that. And I know the, that you, they have the ability to buy video games and get video games down there. I just don't know how hard it is to get it, but I know internet's not something that everybody has. So, Say you don't have internet. What do you do? You can't really do anything about it. So I think that's where things are should be slightly adjusted for both play styles. I do think that. I think that would have been better with that, just because I I'm telling based on my own experience with the solo stuff. It's not that fair. It really is not. It's very Um it's underwhelming and it's very uh, it's not fun. It's It can be fun if you're doing the lower level stuff, but if you're doing six star raids, it's it's very, very uh, taxing to do them, for sure, if you do have to do multiple in a row. And I'm trying to get hidden ability patches, and that's where it's like, uh, I can't do this anymore. I'll be honest, it's pretty, it's pretty rough, I will be honest. But Maybe Dendro will teach us another way how to deal with them, maybe, as solo players. That would be nice. Um, that's right. You're a regular Terra Raid Battle Master, aren't you, Nuket? A little bit. 
Uh, regular attacks don't work so well against Pokemon that have their Terra Shields up. Which makes a lot of sense, but still a little iffy on how I feel about that just because of the solo stuff, like I said. Um, but having your Pokemon Terrasalize and it is an effective measure or method to overcome the issue. A Terrasalize Pokemon will do more damage to shielded Pokemon, especially if it uses moves that match its Terra type. Dealing enough damage to a Pokemon with a Terra Shield up can destroy the shield and break the Pokemon stance, which means you'll do normal damage again. They only have one shield, which is nice in this game. Because in Sword and Shield, they had two shields and three shields. So, I like that they only have one shield in this game, because I already know how Sword and Shields was too, because that's also another thing that I did the solo raiding thing. So, they could be very, very dangerous when it comes to how to do them by your own. But thankfully... In this game, it's only hidden abilities, and not for Gigantamax Pokemon. Because that was a little bit harder to do solo. Thankfully, hidden abilities are something, you know, you can catch a 3-star raid Pokemon and get a hidden ability. But if you want, like, a starter with a hidden ability, you have to do those. So, you know, in order to get it, maybe they'll, you know, be a special raid for starters with hidden abilities, because obviously you just need to do a 3-star raid to get one. But... For the current moment, it's only through hidden ability patches, which is requires you to do a 6-star raid. But Gigantamax was definitely harder, I will say that for sure. Just because of the fact that you get like a Magikarp and then I think it was like Iggly buff or something like that. Where all it did was uh, Defense Curl or something like that and Magikarp would use Splash. And you would literally do only have two people attacking the entire raid. That was That was dumb. I'll be honest, that was really dumb. I I did not like the Magikarp being in those raids at all. Because you'd be like, you do full damage and then you just get completely trounced or just destroyed by the raid Pokemon in the den and have no chance of even fighting back because that Magikarp was literally there just to mess you up. But thankfully that doesn't happen in this one, which is nice. They at least do damage, which is nice. I will say that. Um, this means that it's important to properly time your terrestrializing in Terra Raid battles, but you have to attack three times to get terrestrialization, which she didn't mention. Um, in conclusion, and even if you're using status moves, so you cannot use status moves to charge terrestrialization, which is weird. You really should, but you have to do three regular attacks to get terrestrialization, which would be much nicer if you could just terrestrialize whenever. I really do think they should let you do that whenever, but you kind of get, you know, a little bit of an unfair situation when it comes to that in the main area. But I think what you do in, like, a real tras or regular raid is everyone will terrestrialize at the same time, and then you just bash through that shield as much as possible, unless they're, they have more health and Four star, four person raids, but I don't think that's the case because I did two, a two person raid before, and it didn't feel like they had any difference in health or shield. I could be wrong, but I really do do think it's normal. Um, normal health is what you would in a solo raid, but it it is it is different though a little bit, just because it's easier to do damage. Um, as I say. Fight fire with fire and Terra Pokemon with Terra po um, to Pokemon. Okay. Um, be sure to work together with your teammates to smash through your opponent's Terra Shield. Okay. Easy peasy. Um, oh man, I was about to suggest we do some more hands-on practice to really drive the point home. Um, but I guess we're out of time once again. Next class will be our midterm exam. Aim for a perfect score. Osu Osu. Osu Osu. Okay. So this is what I was wondering about. How does the midterm work for this one? Are we going to be in a classroom or are we going to actually be taking the test outside? Because that is pretty interesting. Let's get ready for our midterm. We'll just skip on through. Battle studies with Miss Dendra. And let's get right into the midterm. And hopefully, you know, pass with flying colors because we haven't failed one yet. And we haven't had a missed point yet either. Oh, and we are inside a classroom. Okay, so... We do actually go inside. 
Oh, sorry to all of you who went to the schoolyard first, before finding the right room. Um, I guess we can do our tests in the classroom, at least. It might be hard to write your answers out on the field. Which makes sense. Um, alright. Time to put on your game faces and do battle with those test sheets. Okay. Nothing, uh, no Easter eggs on her black on her blackboard or what would be a blackboard or chalkboard. But it's obviously a screen in this game. But usually it would be like a, a chalkboard, obviously. The higher a Pokemon special defense, the less damage it takes from the higher Oh, okay. Higher. Okay, I get it. Special attack. Okay. Obviously. I was I got confused for a second based on the wording. The higher spe so special defense is good against special attacks, basically. The less damage it takes from special attacks. Okay. And obviously physical and terrestrial terrestrial was the only other options. I was I didn't know I didn't look at the other options. I got confused for a second from that. Which of the following has no effect on move on a move's damage? Move's type, move's name. That's 100% the answer. So move's type, move's power, both of those affect it. The move's name has n no correlation to the damage you do. How ma Unless you splash, obviously. How many trainers are on a terror raid team? Obviously four. It would be nice to have eight, though. I will say that. What is an effective method for breaking an opponent's terror shield? Switching Pokemon, you can't. Terrestrializing and attacking, yes. Cheering. Cheering could, in essence, in a solo raid, and in a multi-person raid, but terrestrializing and attacking is how you actually do it. What is Miss Dendra's favorite type? Well, she said fighting, so fighting is definitely the answer, but fire and psychic. Psychic could be one, because of the fact of Tulip and her Medicham, so, but fighting is the real answer, which is she, all, she also has that triangle badge on her, on her chest. Over, like, on her right. Or actually, no, that's her. From her facing us, it's her right. But for where she's actually facing, that would be her left. If I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, that would be her left. So on her, what would be her left would be where the fighting pin is. But, yeah, definitely, it's kind of iffy because of the Metacham. Because Metacham is her main Pokemon. Time's up. Put your pencils down. I saw you giving it everything you've got. I'm sure you'll get a perfect score. Well, your class was kind of easy, so if I do fail this, I'd be surprised. Um, well done, everyone. You can ask for your scores at the front desk, of course. Okay. And obviously, three points to pass the midterm, four points to pass the finals. So obviously, as long as we get, you know, if we get a perfect one, we'll be perfectly fine. Well, let's see here. Let's see how you did on your battle studies test. And let's see. Five out of five, still acing it, which is good. And we also get a little reward, which is the five extra candies. And it's it's the same every time. So five for the, for passing midterm, small. Then five for medium, for passing final. But okay, we'll definitely take it. Let's get into the next round of battle studies. And let's see what our next round will be. I'm wondering if it's always going to be terror rating or not. Because if it is, maybe we'll learn something that I don't know about it. But so far, everything has been the stuff I do know, because that's what I do outside of episode is the terror rating stuff. Um, another day, another round of battle study. Oh, Sue, let's get right to it. Okay, what's our next round? Um, you all gave everything you had on the midterm exams. Well done. We'll, we'll resume our regular classes today, so keep up that energy for the second half of the term. Okay. Um, have you all been using the R button to send out your Pokemon? Oh, let's go mode. Okay. Yeah, we've been doing that. Um, if you do, your Pokemon will- Is that Penny? Yeah, it is. Huh. So Arvin and Penny swap out randomly. That's interesting. Because Arvin would have his Mabo stiff right in the position where Penny is. Huh. Um, if you do, your Pokemon will run off in a direction you're facing. It's a super useful tactic and lets, that lets your Pokemon pick up faraway items for you. And that's not all. That's something Sagawaro taught us, but okay. Um, th if there's a wild Pokemon near you, where you are, where you set your Pokemon, they'll start battling each other. We call those battles Uttle Battles. 
which we know because we did, um, when we were doing our episode on Paradox Pokemon, that's how we got it. That's how we got a shiny uh, Screamtail. So we know all about that one. Um, just as the name implies, your Pokemon will act on its own during auto battles, meaning you won't have to give it any commands. And if your Pokemon wins, it'll get EXP points, just like it would in a regular battle. If you make good use of these battles, they can really be be a really efficient way to train your party. And it's also, um, if you eat a picnic, um, item for terror raids specifically, you can raise your power for terror raids, which is also good. But, because I don't do the picnics that often, I should do them like that. It would definitely come in handy. But, they're only really good for the 6-star raids, for the most part. Because you can do 5-star raids pretty easily, by yourself. But, if you were to eat a picnic item, the reason why I brought this up, you could raise your sparkling power while doing auto battles to get a better chance of getting a shiny Pokemon. And then put the encounter power for certain type that you're looking for. So if you're looking for, let's say, Spiritomb, you want it to be blizzarding out in Glassdale Mountain, or over in the Glassdale Mountains, and then you want to go over to a ruin area. Auto battle with spirit tombs while it's blizzarding with ghost ghost encounter and sparkling power at the max that you could possibly get to maybe get yourself a spirit tomb. You may even get a shiny uh, mimic you as well. It's very possible for both. But yeah, it's definitely a good way of you know doing battles that makes it so you can find a lot of Pokemon. That's the that's the reason why you do auto battles. But that was the reason why we found the Scream Tail, I'm pretty sure. We didn't have the picnic items, though, when we did that. So that was very interesting that we got one without that. But it was still cool, though, nonetheless. Um, but you'll want to remember that Pokemon won't evolve or learn new moves right away if they level up from an auto battle. Also, if a Pokemon loses an auto battle, it'll just come um, back with just a small amount of HP left. Make sure to heal it up right away. Which makes sense. Oh, whoops. I just did the whole class as a one-sided lecture. Does anyone have any questions so far? How do I stop an auto battle? Can I catch a wild Pokemon in auto battles? No, you can't. How do you stop an auto battle? I think just throwing it back in your Pokeball, but I'm going to see if she has any, like, way of doing it. Oh, there's no stopping an auto battle once it starts. You have to wait and see how it plays out. You can call your Pokemon off before the battle starts, though, if you press the ZR button, while your Pokemon is still out on its way to the opponent. Okay, so basically what I thought, but at least they gave you the option to ask. I was- so none of them give you anything, then, out of that option. Um, even during auto battles, our Pokemon are out there battling for us tra their trainers. Keep an eye on them as much as possible. If it looks like they're going to lose, be sure to have them retreat. Okay. Well, thanks, Dendra. Um, also, this goes without saying, but Pokemon with low HP are already worn out. Um, they probably won't enjoy auto battles as much, so don't work them too hard, okay? Makes sense. Um, in conclusion, auto battles only work if a trainer and their Pokemon have a relationship of mutual trust. Um, be sure, be smart with how you use auto battles so you don't lose the trust of your Pokemon. Okay. Um, um, man, I was about to just suggest we do some hands-on practice to really drive the point home, but I guess we'll run out of time as usual. Class is over for now. Take care, you little rascals. Okay. So I already knew about the, the auto battle from, obviously, the star barrages, and... Honestly, you guys should know as well as long as you've been, you know, paying, you know, paying attention and following along. But, yeah, for the most part, we already knew that one, to be honest. So, interesting. That's something you just learn on your own. And we get told about Let's Go features at the very beginning of the game, before we even make it to Mesagoza too. So, it's kind of, they don't really need to repeat themselves on that one. But they don't know, the teachers don't know we learned that. 
but interesting. Um, another day, another round of battle study, Osu. Let's get right to it. And just like with, um, like, fighting and physical, um, like, things, repetition is a big, big thing in that. And there, it kind of makes sense that she rep repeats her first saying every time. And her last thing every time, because that's something you do in fighting, is repetition's a big thing. So that's actually very interesting, that they actually kept that in their dialogue. Um, I hope you gave auto battles a shot, like we talked about last class. We already know how it works, so sorry we don't need to do that one, but thanks for the option. Um, making good use of auto battles will let you train up a bunch of different Pokémon. Kinda, but the thing is, is it's not the best way to train your Pokemon. You want to give them stat boosters first before doing stuff like that, for sure. Um, it's also an efficient way to gather the Pokemon materials you'll need to make TMs and at TM machines. Which is true. That is very true. Um, speaking of which, have y'all been using TM machines? A little bit. Very little, but I have. Um, I sure hope so, because it's pop quiz time. To create TMs, all you need Pokemon materials, and one other thing. Else anyone remember what it is? LP. HP money. Well, LP is money, but League Points for sure. That's a very easy one. Um, looks like you're already a TM Machine Pro new kid. Yep, it's pretty simple. Um, the correct answer is League Points or LP for shorts. You can give LP and Pokemon materials to a TM Machine to create TMs, but that's not all. You can also exchange Pokemon materials at a TM machine to get LP. But the thing is, is you really don't want to do that. Um, I re unless you're giving Gimme Ghoul coins, then I can maybe make an exception. But that's once you, you know, have Gimme Ghoul evolved and stuff like that. And then you don't want another one or something. I kind of think I might want two of them just in case, but that's, not, that's me, to be honest. Just because I can maybe trade one over to my other game, or maybe even to, like, Kraken if he wants one, so he can start doing the raids with me to make them easier, once he eventually gets his game. But, honestly, yeah, for the most part, yeah. Uh, that's the only thing I can think of for LP, is trading for LP is the gimme gold coins, just because the TMs are... You want to keep those TM materials, because then you don't have to search for those Pokemon. Since, you know, you don't want to have to keep doing that. So, it's kind of iffy. It really is. Um, I recently heard about shady individuals getting LP illegally using a technique called hacking, or something like it. That sounds very familiar. Good old Penny. Um, I don't want any of you getting involved in bad stuff like that. Got it? Uh, too late. Um, anyways, you can also add TMs that you want to make your you you make to your watch list. This will let you keep an eye on the materials you need to gather. Okay. Which I already knew about, but cool. Um, in conclusion, in order to make TMs you need Pokemon materials. And if you want to get a hold of these lots of me these materials, you have to battle all kinds of Pokemon. I wonder if legendaries give any. Because I honestly don't know. Um, oh man, I was just about to suggest we do some hands-on practice to really drive the point home. But I guess we're never going to get half the time, though. Class is over for now. Take care, you little rascals. Okay, so one more and then we have our final. And then we can get into Dendra's story. And then we can learn a little bit more about Dendra outside of her classes, which is good. But let's see here. Final one for battle studies, and then we have the, obviously, the final wonder what her final one's going to be about, just because we learned about Let's Go, we learned about TMs, we learned about Terror Raids, we learned about physical and special moves, as well as stats. So what would be the final one? Um, Osu, this is our last class, but don't let those energy levels drop before we wrap things up. Okay, maybe gyms? You've shown that you have more than enough knowledge to be support super strong battle orders. I don't know um, that I have much time left to teach you. Um, but you can always aim to be ever for ever greater heights. So today I'm going to teach you about the rules of Link Battles. Oh, interesting. 
When two trainers participate in linked battles together, they can engage in either single battles or double battles with each other. And if you're playing in a group of four, you can all battle each other in multi-battles. Now then, when you're out having battles during your independent study, you can use whatever number of Pokemon you like. And they can be any level, but in Link Battles they are special rules, so keep that in mind. I wish there was, um, fake trainers you can Link Battle with to do level 50-50 battles. Because there's no way to do that in the base game, which is a little unfortunate. So, one thing I kind of miss about the battle facilities, but it would be nice to kind of, like, you know, test Pokemon with that, without them, like, cheating on you like the battle facilities did. Because the battle facilities still cheated. Because they would know what Pokemon you're using and obviously completely counter you. But it would be nice to see what the opponent has that's an AI and what you have. And then both of you kind of guess what each, the other one's going to use or something like that. Although the, it's never random with an AI. But it would be interesting, nonetheless. But... That could be a thing for another game. Would be cool, though. But, yeah, there's no real way that I know of that you could do 50-50 battles. Unless you're doing online, like, competitive battles, which is unfortunate. Or you could battle your friends, but I would like to do, you know, solo battles against, you know, AI if I could. It would be nice. Um, some of these special rules involve adjusting Pokemon's levels. Now the no restrictions rules... Um, set lets all Pokemon stay at their current level. It lets trainers use multiple Pokemon of the same species. And multiples of the same held item too. But also lets them use legendaries. So be careful. Um, but if you choose to use normal rules, all the Pokemon will be set to level 50 for your battles, regardless of what level they actually are. This even includes lower level Pokemon. They'll get a power boost to participate. Which makes a lot of sense, since you don't want to be under-leveled, but the thing is you're still going to lose with the under-leveled Pokemon anyways, just because they're not going to have the stats of a fully evolved Pokemon. Normal rules let you use multiple of the same Pokemon species, and of the same held items too. The great part about the rule set is that it lets any um, of your Pokemon participate. All they have to do is learn some good moves. Uh, not really true. Um, lastly, the rule set called Flat Rules mostly affects Pokemon over level 50. Such Pokemon will be set to level 50 for the duration of the battle. Okay. The Flat Rules set is the one often used for official tournaments. This rule does not allow trainers to use multiple Pokemon of the same species or multiples of the same held item. Okay, which makes sense. Sometimes it won't let you use legendaries, and sometimes it will, too. That's also a thing. Um, Alright, here's a question for you. I do think it, that in tournaments you shouldn't be able to use legendaries, but the thing is, is for some reason they're allowed to. I don't get that. I never understood that one. It's like, everyone's gonna use Mega Rayquaza, or something similar to it. It's like, why? <laughs> just two normal Pokemon using legendaries isn't gonna make things fun. It's just gonna be way too confusing. Just because there's too much to learn from legendaries. Because, one, you can't use a lot of normal Pokemon against them, so I never really understood that. It's not my topic, though, so I won't go too much into detail. I just think it's weird, honestly. Just because using Arceus versus Arceus doesn't seem like a fun battle to me, to be honest. Some people might think it's fun, but that's just my, my way of thinking of it, just to be honest. But if you're doing, like, a non-restricted battle, then I can see it being fair and, like, you know, that being a non-tournament thing. But in tournaments, it just don't make sense to me. But for some reason, they allow it. I don't know. I don't get it. Maybe maybe one legendary, but I don't see a full team of legendaries making any sense. Just because legendaries have way too inflated stats compared to a normal Pokemon is my reasoning. Let's continue, though. Um, which rule set should you pick if you want to use a lower level Pokemon to keep its level low? Normal rules, flat rules. Um, normal rules. Okay. 
Um, oh, gotcha there. Normal rule suggests it's all the Pokemon to level 50, even lower level ones. Okay, you won't be fighting with a normal Pokemon, though. Well, you wait, you didn't give me the option then. Wait a minute. I just realized that the two options we had didn't have that. Because, um, she's talking about level 5 Pokemon. Like, one. You want, like, Endure, and then, um, what is that move? I'm trying to remember the move. It starts with an E, though. But, um, you do all the damage that you took. Well, actually, no, you don't do Endure. You, um, you put a Focus Sash on, you live with 1 HP, and then you smack the opponent, po um, the op opposite Pokemon for their entire HP bar because you double the damage that you took, basically, and you throw it back at them, and usually it leads in a one-shot, but, yeah, that's an interesting one. Okay. Well, if you got some clever strategy that you need to use a level 5 Pokemon for, your best bet is to you choose the flat rules, um, rules rule sets. Okay. Um, of course, you can also use choose no restrictions. If you want to battle with any Pokemon you want. Well, I don't play flat rules, so I wouldn't know that. Um, at any level, and with any held item. I don't even really do online battles, to be fair. So, I wouldn't even have known that one. But interesting. Um, that's a pretty good rule set, but I didn't know about it. I should say that. I didn't know about it, it's just I, I I thought it was no restrictions, to be honest. Um, that's a pretty good rule set for when you want to battle freely with friends. Or um online and just troll and have fun. Cause Focus Ash and I, I always forget the move for that, but basically you hit Focus Ash, and then you just smack the opponent Pokemon for as much damage as you can do with that one move. I always forget the move name, though. Um, in conclusion, normal rules suggest that po all Pokemon to level 50. Flat rules lets you use lower level Pokemon at their actual levels. Okay. Um, I hope you'll use these tips to have some exciting battles with your friends. Um, oh man, I was just about to suggest we do some hands-on practice to really drive the point home. But I guess we truly are out of time. Next class will be our final exam. Aim for a perfect score. Osu, Osu. Osu, Osu indeed. But here we go. Final exam and then we can get into our story. Took us literally, you know, a normal amount of time for an episode though to even get through the, the, the class here for her though. Just because there's so much more information to unpack in Dendra's than it was in the other ones, which is interesting. Let's see what her final exam is. She's definitely going to have the Link Battle on there, though. So I need to remember that. Thing is, is I really don't know my Link Battle stuff, so if it doesn't, you know, stay in my mind when we're doing this, it'd be unfortunate, because this could be where we lose our first point. Um, it's finally game day. Today is our final exam. Time to put on our game faces and do battle with those test sheets. Okay. Which cheer boost attacks and special attack for all allies in terror raid battle? That one's go all out. Okay. What do we call battles that Pokemon sent out with our button do on their own? Those are auto battles. Technically, let's go, but um, it's going to be auto battles here. How should I, you obtain LP, take on gems, exchange materials, hack the system? Obviously, hack the system. Um, exchange materials. High-level Pokemon are adjusted to what level when using flat rolls in battle? Level 50. Because uh, if you're over level 50, it takes you to level 50. But if you're under level 50, you, s you stay at the level that you are. When using normal rolls in Link Battles, can... You can use multiple Pokemon of the same species in multiples of the same type. Normal rules. That's an iffy subject. Well, true, it's flat one that you can't use multiple, if I remember, based on what she was saying. Um, time's up, put your pencils down. That's multiplayer, though. I'm surprised that is even a thing she would even talk about. Um, I saw you giving everything you got. I'm sure you'll all get perfect scores. Y'all did so well in my class. If you pass the test, you'll officially be Battle Masters. Okay, hopefully we are. 
Um, now go on and ask for Shirley Stellar Scores. Um, for your Shirley Stellar Scores at the front desk, you little rascals. So let's see if we did good. I have a feeling we might have lost one point here. But I do think we passed. Just because of the link battle questions. But so let's see here. We'll skip on through. Let's see. What did we get? 5 out of 5. Okay, cool. I actually thought we might have gotten one wrong there. So we'll take our freebies. And now we can finally go into Dendra now, which is good. So done with her class, now we can actually see how she's doing. You just gotta find her. Looks like she's in Schoolyard. <laughs> which makes a lot of sense, since that's where we shot our her. Um, outside of, well, outside of going here in the last episode. Oh, and it's actually nighttime up here. <laughs> oh, it actually changes too up here, that's cool. Interesting. I'm gonna try and stay away from Nimona just in case if it triggers a story thing for her if we get too close. Let's go head over to Dendra and see what's going on with her for her story. Obviously she's gonna have four ones for every single one with we, what we did with Salvatore Saguaro, um, Clell, Miriam. Not with- well Penny did two. So every character's had four. But let's get into it. Um, Osu oh, new kid. Osu oh, indeed, Dendra. Um, have you come here out here to the schoolyard for some training? Uh, sure. Technically, yes. Um, ha! Huh. I knew I could see a fighting spirit burning between those uh, behind those eyes of yours. Um, why don't we go for a bit of running together? Here to get to know each other a little better. Okay. Um, ready? Let's go. Okay. Interesting. You ran three laps around the schoolyard with Miss Dendra. Do some night running. <laughs> like we're little Mac from uh, Punch Out. <laughs> Too bad we don't have a pink uh, jump jumpsuit for, there for it, though. A um, few. That really worked up a nice sweat. You got a good pair of legs on you, new kid. A good bout of training sure does make a body hungry, doesn't it? I'll let you have one of my homemade sandwiches as my way of saying thanks for running with me today. Feed those muscles. Huh. Interesting for a soul dialogue with her. Miss Dendra's sandwich was dry and had an odd smell. The taste left much to be desired. Well, that doesn't sound good. Um, how was it? I hope it was tasty. Uh, yeah, tasty. I'll just be... I'll go with that. I don't want to make her sad. Oh, sorry. I shouldn't have asked you that. <laughs> I'm athletic and all, but I don't know the first thing about making good food. As your honest reaction, you just re just reminded me. Um, well, um, see you later. Enjoy your sore mus- uh, enjoy your sore muscles tomorrow. Uh, thanks? <laughs> That's not really what you should say, but okay. You became slightly closer with Miss Dendra. Interesting thing for her to say. For the- enjoy your sore muscles. Um, oh soon, you kid. Muscles sure are great, don't you think? Okay, so she's not out here. So we need to make our way to another room. I'm guessing cafeteria? Nope, she's in the home economics room. Okay. So she's with Mr. Sagawaro right now, that's interesting. So let's go see what Miss Dendra is doing in the home ec class. Is she actually talking with him? Nope, she's just in here. Huh, taking one of his courses, I guess. Um, oh, see, new kid. Hey, Dendra, still don't get why you call us new kid, even though we've been at the school for the entire game, but every teacher kind of says that, though. Let's be honest here. Um, fancy meeting you here, in the home economics classroom. What a coincidence, eh? Likewise, or what brings you here? Um, yeah, what brings you here? Um, so, um, well, you see. Miss- Oh, no, that's Mr. Saguaro. Hmm, Miss Dendra tells me she's here. Oh, um, for intensive training in sandwich making. Um, oh, well. Um, no use hiding it now. Um, oh, dear. I'm terribly sorry. Were you keeping this a secret? Obviously. Well, I mean, not really, but it just doesn't look very cool to openly admit I'm here for intensive training, you know. Understood. I will be more careful in the future. Um, well, new kid, now you know what I'm up to. I guess you'll have to help me out with any training here. I guess we could try. Um, try this sandwich. It's a result of my training so far. It's probably gonna be average, maybe? Miss Dendra's sandwich was soggy and hard to eat, and once again, the taste left much to be desired. Seems like it was worse. Um, 
That was my meat lover's pres prescotto. A prescotto. Bacon and chorizo sandwich. How was it? Sagoro looked disappointed. Um. Hmm. Maybe some veggies, because veggies soak up a little bit of the the grease of meat, technically. So it wouldn't be as soggy. So he could use a little bit more veggies. We'll try and help her. Um, what? You mean there was a problem with my twist of filling? I guess focusing on muscle building ingredients really did a number on the flavor, huh? Honestly, meat is better than vegetables and sandwiches, but the thing is, is... You need a little bit of vegetables to kind of counter out the meat of the bread. It's like the ratio of everything is kind of iffy when it comes to sandwiches. Miss mm, Dendroff, I believe a simple addition of butter would have done wonders for your sandwich. Butter helps protect the bread from getting soggy due to the moisture in the ingredients. That's interesting. Really? It can also work to enhance the sandwich's flavor. Well, that one makes sense. But I didn't know it made it less soggy. That's interesting. That, now I'm learning something. Oh, butter. That makes sense. Thank you for teaching me that tip, Mr. Sagawaro. But why didn't you tell me that while I was making the sandwich? Uh, you probably didn't think about it. Oh, well, you see, when I saw you, I not realized that you had begun your, um, <laughs> food prep. Thought you were simply trying to destroy my classroom. <laughs> That's a good one. I would... You know what? Fair. Um, well, anyways. <laughs> She's dot, dot, dot. Um, new kid. Thanks for you and Mr. Sagawaro here. I may finally be getting the hang of this. Um, thanks for your advice. No problem. You became even closer with Miss Demdra. They may ask for two more dialogues with her. Is she going to be still in here? Um, same thing as before, so we need to leave a room and then find her again. She's in the nurse's office, really. That's interesting. Was she in there to learn, um, the health benefits of food? That's the only thing I can think of. That's interesting. Oh, no way, no way, no way. Oh, come on, Maryam. Just try it. Oh, uh, what's wrong? Yeah, you know, what's going on here? Um, oh, great timing, dukehead. Nurse Mary Am here won't try the sandwich I made. Um, what the? I don't want to get a stomachache. Um, you won't, probably. Um, I still remember the sandwich you made me with meat filling and meat for bread. That one was really messed me up bad. Yeah, that definitely doesn't sound good. Just because, um, uh, you need to kind of ratio everything, for sure. Um, I hadn't trained in the art of sandwich making yet, back then. I was young and thoughtless and... Um, young and thoughtless? It was last month. <laughs> True and fair. Um, so as you can see, I'm not getting anywhere trying to persuade her. Um, even after I went through the intensive tra sandwich making training, it kind of makes me sad. Um, she went through intensive sandwich making training? Uh... She worked really hard at it. I don't know if it's any good, though. Um, hunk. I guess I have no choice, but, um, if you've got one, um, a bit cute little student on your side. So fine, I'll try your scheme of let's see it. Um, yes. I need to come around. Here it is. Okay. Is it good? Oh, it does look bad. It's a strong, little strongly flavored, but I guess it's not bad. Well, that's good to hear. So, at least it's not much to be desired, at least. Um, woohoo. My training paid off. I'm so glad my sandwich pleases the great nurse Miriam. I look up to you, you know. Well, they are both health-based, so that makes sense. You feel trusted by Miss Dendra. Um, thank you for trying it. And thank you to YouTube, new kid. No problem. Interesting. So, one left to go. Oh, Miriam still wants to talk. Oh, and she's running off again. That was weird. But that's just how Miss Dendra is. I guess she's always coming into the nurse's office with some injury or another, too. Huh. That doesn't sound like a good thing. But interesting, though. 
So they really do know each other, based on that. That's interesting. It looks like the final one's in the school store, where we saw Atticus, uh, or Don Atticus specifically, and his compadre in Penny's story. But, uh, let's see what's going on with Dendra in here. For the final one. Um, oh, so new kid. You here to do a little shopping? Um, I came to see you, actually. So, what's up? Um, haha, <laughs> so you came to see me, did you? Yep, that's true. I'm here to check all the sandwiches they got for sale. Oh, you're just gonna buy one? The school store sandwiches taste great and have excellent nutritional ba balance, too. Um, what happened to your intensive training? Yeah, w why the mix-up? Um, huh, I guess I'm not just used to it yet. All the training kind of wore me out. I achieved my goal anyways, so I could, I'm going to take a break from sandwich making for a bit. Okay. Um, oh right, I didn't tell you what my goal was. I wanted to pay nurse, pay back nurse, nurse Miriam back for everything she's done for me. It was my way of saying thanks. Oh, so that was a reason. She's so nice and so skilled at what she does. I really look up to her. I wanted to try and make a sandwich, make, or try sandwich making so I could be skilled at doing something for other people like she is. But I guess I just wasn't cut out for it. Well, you're getting better. No reason to give up now. Um, what I am cut out for, though, is being full of energy, so I decided to focus on that instead. Okay. Um, like I said in class, I think people in Pokemon should make their strong points stronger. You really helped me out, new kid. Take this as my way of saying thanks. Okay, well, no problem. Ten bottles of protein's really nice, thank you. That's 100k right there, on just in general. Thanks, that's really good. You put the bottles of protein in your bag's other item pocket. Um, Alright then, what should I go, um, what should I go with today, um, to get my protein in? You formed a close bond with Miss Dendra. Hmm, interesting. Wonder what she says after that. Um, oh, so new kid, are you getting your training in? Well, kinda. I'm definitely training up some Pokemon. Outside of episode, but still. We're definitely preparing for our Team Star fights, too. I do have my Pokemon transferred over. Although, some are not the exact Pokemon, I had to, you know, take some liberties. There is one that is obviously the same Pokemon. So, if we were to go to here, obviously we have our team, Yukio, our Gigawatt, our Sephira, um, or Sephira, yeah, Sephira, Spooky, Xander, and Ampho Amphitrite from, or Ampharite from our Scarlet version, but they're obviously not the same Pokemon, but they're same, like, well, only thing that's different is the ability on the Garchomp for Sephira, and that being the hidden ability Rough Skin, but everything else is pretty much the same. Obviously, the shiny Espartha, so we still have Yukio, the same exact one, so this is the only one that's the exact same one, but the thing is, is just in general, having our team from Scarlet for our rematches on the, you know, Team Star would be better because of the fact that, well, they're going to be a lower level than our current Pokemon. So, technically, we did kind of, you know, put our other team away for now, which is a little unfortunate. But we are level 80 on a lot of these Pokemon, and I feel like... Maybe we could use them for the legendaries, as long as I have a uh, false swipe on one of them, I think I can work with it. And then obviously Yawn would also be something we could use, but for when it comes to Team Star, we're going to be using our Scarlet team for that, and having, you know, a nice little crossover between both games, but it being Violet instead with those Pokemon. So, yeah, it's definitely going to be pretty fun, but with that being said... We still have to finish up what we're doing for, obviously, our, you know, our Yuva Academy stories. So we still need to do the last couple of ones for that. It's so obviously math. We also have the, well, it's easier if I just go there, honestly. So we'll go over to the entrance hall real quick, and then we'll read off what we still have to do. And then, obviously, what stuff I still want to do outside of those episodes as well. Because each one's their own episode at this point. So we just need to remember that and go from there. So obviously math, history, arts, all will be their own episode. So obviously 
Miss Time, Rayfort, Hazel, and then we have Arvin and Nimona on here for the cafeteria in the schoolyard. So that would be those two. Um, and then we also have Finishing Off Shock, which would be part of probably the legendary episode, just because of the Pokedex. And then the Team Star stuff. So overall, a minimum of seven episodes left. So we still have a little bit of left to go. And then if they have any DLC or extra story later, we'll obviously come back to Pokemon Violet. Or if it is a different game entirely, we'll come back to that in due time. But honestly, with that being said, thank y'all for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Keep being spooky. Thank y'all for watching. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Keep being spooky. And peace out. Hey, boys and girls. Thank y'all for watching today's episode. If you liked what you saw today, please leave a like and maybe even subscribe. And... Hit the bell notification down below. If you guys have any kind of suggestions for games, please put that in the comments down below as well. Thank you all for watching today's episode, and keep being spooky. Peace out, guys.